Hi, welcome to CG Dive. As I am uploading this video, Blender 2.93 has just been released, and Blender 3.0 will probably be released sometime this year. A unique aspect of open source software is that you have constant access to earlier versions of the software and even to future ones, to betas and alphas. Blender even has daily builds, so you have access to the absolute cutting edge of development. Some of these experimental builds can be buggy, so you have to use them on your own risk, but they are there. I think many people still don't understand how you can manage and install multiple Blender versions. So in this video, I'm going to show you two ways to achieve this. One is completely manual and the other is using the Blender Launcher tool. Blender Launcher is a separate software which automates downloading and managing different Blender builds. If you want to be the first to watch CG Dive videos, you can gain access on Patreon, YouTube memberships and Gumroad. So let's start with how you can manually install Blender builds. I'm on Windows, so that's what I'll demonstrate with. Linux and Mac users may have to figure out some details for themselves. So probably the most common way to download Blender is to go to blender.org and go to the download page. Here if you click on the big download Blender button, I think Blender tries to figure out the most logical download for you. On Windows, I get the MSI installer file. So if you're a very casual Blender user, you can simply get this, install it and use it. When a new version of Blender is available, download and install it again and so on. Should be fairly simple. I won't use the installer, so I'll click cancel here and go back to the downloads. So below the download Blender button, you'll find a drop down menu with other versions. And here you'll find Mac and Linux versions. We also have Windows Store and Steam versions. I think the Steam one is kind of popular. And again, if you just want a simple way to have the most recent Blender version, then these options are great. But this video is not about just using the stable version. If you want to easily switch between Blender builds, you should go for the portable zip packages. And here in the same menu, I can download the stable version of Blender as a portable zip file. This will download a zip file to your hard drive and I'll show you what to do with it in a second. Before that, let's see what other Blender versions are available. Under download, below the other versions button, there is a link saying looking for long-term support, get Blender 2.83 LTS. If you go to this link, you'll find information about the long-term support version of Blender. Again, you can download it from the Windows Store, Steam, or Linux. And here you'll find the manual download and install options. And again, I'm going to download the zip file. And the download will start. Okay, and we also have experimental versions of Blender. Back to download, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and find the Go Experimental field. And here I can click this Download Blender Experimental button. And that will take me to the experimental builds, or rather to the daily builds. There is a slight difference between daily and experimental builds. What you'll see here will vary slightly from day to day. But on most days, you should find at least one daily build in here. Currently, we have a release candidate for the LTS version 2.93 beta and an alpha version of Blender 3. So I'm going to get the alpha from here. Just click on it. And in this case, the only option that I have for download is a zip file. Okay, let's go to the experimental ones. Here we have builds focused on specific features that may be in early development. For example, we have the Cycles X build, which promises to boost the speed of Cycles rendering by a lot. We have a pause library build and so on. I'm going to download Cycles X and pause library builds. Okay, but there is more. We can download even older versions of Blender. If we go back to download, I can then navigate to previous versions. If you want Blender 2.79 or earlier, you'll find these builds here. You can even go back to the first ever Blender version on iRix, but I'll just grab a zip file of Blender 2.79 for Windows. These were all official Blender builds. There are also unofficial ones. These are Blender versions created by Blender enthusiasts who needed to diverge from the main Blender development for various reasons. 
I'm sure there are many unofficial builds, but I don't use any of them myself to be honest. But one that I'm aware of is the Fracture Modifier build. I can go to blenderphysics.com slash fracture modifier. This special build is still based on Blender 2.79. If I want to download it, I'll go to the homepage. And here I can download a Windows build. I'm going to click on this build and download it. Okay, now I have all of these Blender builds as zip files in my downloads folder. What do I do with them, right? Actually, it couldn't be any simpler. You just have to unzip these files anywhere at all, and they'll be ready to use. So what I'll do is open another Explorer window, and I have a special folder called Software, and then 3D Software in it. And in it, I already have a Blender folder, which I'm al already using. So for demonstration, I'll create a new one, a new folder, and call it My Blenders or something like that. And now all I need to do is extract all of these zip files into this new folder that I created. And there are many ways to extract a zip. I'm sure you have your own personal way, but with 7-zip, which I use, I just open the zip file and drag it and drop it into the folder. So basically every zip file contains a folder. And in this folder, you'll find all of the files that you need for this build. And so I'll keep unzipping and I'll come back to you when I'm done. So here are all of the Blender builds that I downloaded and now I have them unzipped in this folder. And now I can simply enter the folder of the build that I want to use, find the Blender executable, double click it. Blender starts on my other monitor, but here it is. And now I'm ready to use Blender 2.92. I can also go to the Asset Browser, Experimental Build, Run Blender. And here it is. It doesn't really say that it's the Asset Browser Experimental Build. So especially for the Alpha Builds, you may have to find your own way to keep track on uh, what you're working with. But anyway, this is how you can manually install custom Blender builds, any builds that you like, using a portable zip file. By the way, if you don't like some of these long names that were created automatically, you can rename them. Especially before the first time you run this build, it's totally fine to change the name. After the first time you run it, I wouldn't recommend changing the name of the folder. Something like this. And now I can run Blender 3 Alpha. Okay, and that's nice, but let's actually come to the main event of this video, which is using the Blender Launcher to simplify all of this downloading, installing, and running of multiple Blender versions. You can buy the Blender Launcher from this Gumroad page. Blender Launcher is actually free, and you can download it from GitHub, but if you want to support this creator, do buy the add-on. If not, then download it from GitHub. I did buy the add-on and I can go to my content and download the Windows version. Here is the zip file that I got. I'm going to create a new folder, call it Blender Launcher and unzip the content of this zip file into this folder. The content is simply one executable. Just drag it and drop it. And now if I start this file, it may ask you to first choose where Blender builds will be stored. Press continue. And here I'm going to select the folder that I just created and choose it. And Blender Launcher created a bunch of additional folders which I'll explain in a second. Also, Blender Launcher is in my system tray. I'm going to grab it and place it here so that it's visible. And now if I double click this icon, I'm going to see the Blender Launcher interface. By default, I'm going to see my library, which is the collection of Blender builds that I have. Currently, I don't have any, so I need to go to the downloads section. And here I can download all of the official Blender builds. So for example, I'm going to want the current stable version, 
just click on download. I may want the latest LTS version and maybe Blender 2.79 as well. Okay, these are the stable builds. Here on the side, there are two more tabs which say daily. These are the exact same daily builds that we saw on the Blender website a minute ago. So if I want the 3.0 alpha, I can just download it and then move to the experimental versions and maybe I want Cycles X and Asset Browser. And now all of these versions are being downloaded. And now I'll stop the recording and start it again when they have all been downloaded. Once Blender Launcher is finished downloading a build, this build will disappear from the downloads page. This is to prevent you from downloading the same build more than once. And now if we go to the library section, I'll have all of my downloaded builds. And just like in the downloads, they are organized in tabs. Stable versions are in the stable tab, daily versions in the daily tab, and experimental versions in the experimental tab. Now I can easily start any of these Blender builds from my library. I just need to press the launch button and Blender will start on my other monitor, but here is my Blender 2.92. If I'm feeling adventurous, I may want to start 2.79. And here is the old beast. If I want to try Cycles X, I'll go to the experimental builds and launch Cycles X. Here it is. And that is how easy it is to start any Blender build that you downloaded through Blender Launcher. But it gets even better. If you have one build that you really like and that you work with a lot, you can make this build appear in the tray icon. So for me, that would be the current stable version of Blender, which at this time is 2.92. And if I want to have it in the tray icon menu, I just have to right click on this build and choose add to quick launch. Okay. And now if I go to my tray icon, right click, at the very top, I'm going to have this Blender option. If I click on it, I'll start Blender 2.92. And you can only have one Blender version on this tray icon menu. If you have additional favorite versions, builds that you want to use often, you can right click on them and choose add to favorites. So let's add 2.79 to my favorites and then maybe Cycles X as well. And now if I go to my user section, I'll find these builds under the favorites tab. And these are the main functions. If you right click on a build, you'll get additional options. Register extension will associate a blend file with this build. So when you double click on a blend file, it will open in Blender 2.92 in this case. Create shortcut will create a shortcut for this build on your desktop. I don't use the symlink and install templates features, but if you want to know more about them, this app has a really nice documentation page and I'll link to it. The show release notes will show you the release notes for this Blender build. This can be useful. Show folder will show you the folder of this Blender installation. But what I do most with this tool is download Blender builds and run them. By the way, if you run a build, you'll see a number showing how many instances of this Blender build are running. If I run this build again, I'll have two of this same build running. Now I also launched the 2.79 build and I see that I have one instance of it running. If I close it, the number will disappear. Okay, that's how you use this tool. Let's look at the Blender Launcher folder again. And here you'll see that Blender Launcher created a couple of folders. One is called Stable, another one Experimental, and another one Daily. And these obviously correspond to the stops that we have here. If I enter the Stable folder, you'll see that it contains the exact same builds that I have over here in my library. If I go under Experimental, you'll see that it contains the same builds that I have under Experimental tab. 
So this is how the Blender Launcher organizes the build that you download from the download section. It simply unpacks them in these folders. So the temp folder, you don't need to concern yourself with it. The template folder, honestly, I don't understand. This has to do with um, installing a template, which, as I said, I'm not sure how to use. Stable, experimental, and daily, we already explained. And the custom folder, you may or may not be interested in it. In this folder, you can place a custom Blender build that you downloaded from somewhere and have it appear here in the Blender launcher. So for example, earlier we downloaded the Fracture Modifier build. If I unzip it right in the custom folder and then check my Blender launcher, I may have to restart the launcher. So I'm going to quit and run it again. Double click on the tray icon, go to user, custom, and here I have my Blender Fracture modifier built. I'll launch it. Blender Launcher tells me that I have one instance of this build running. Here it is. I can add the Fracture modifier in here. And I can also add this build to my favorites so that I don't have to go to the custom folder. And here it is. Okay, I think we covered the most useful features of the Blender Launcher. The Blender Launcher is really nice and compact and allows you to do all of this downloading and installing and running of Blender builds really easily. I hope you like this video. I hope you like the tool. I hope you like it enough to consider using it and supporting the creator. Thank you to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon, YouTube memberships and so on and to everyone who is just watching these videos, please click like and subscribe and talk to you soon.